I know. <laughs> Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. As always, we got plenty to talk about for our beloved Titans. Let's not waste a minute. Shane, you know the deal. Start us up. Turn up your volume. Up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Levis towards the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown. Wow. And it's the fourth TD pass of the day in the debut of Will Levis. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick. It's going to be sick. 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 Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Sick Podcast Talking Titans. I'm joined always by my counterparts, Jared and Vin. Yeah, we're not going to waste any longer. I know you got something <laughs> on your mind. Come on. I know you got a nice punch no, line I, waiting for us. I was, okay. I was just going to say, I mean, you just yeah. came out of the gym or something. Is that a tank top or a new bra? Ooh. Oh, man. Like oh, super bra. Oh, 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 man. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I think I he's will. on the same shit Ryan Garcia was on when he beat Devin Haney. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It's good to be back. Thank God that internet has not gotten any better in the last couple of weeks. Definitely not. Uh, it might anyway, have actually um, worse. Listen, it have actually no, worse. It, it's brought us all together with that hot two girl, man. She's fucking going wild right now. Hey, 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 hey. keep it PG here. The hawk two spit on that thing. Oh yeah, the hawk two. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. You know, yeah, sound I'm, I'm still on looking for that girl. Thing. Jeez, so was the whole too many girls like. That. I don't know. I thought you found her on Twitter. But, not too um, long. <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. There, uh, let's get the let's get the. Uh, no, you know what? I'm not gonna say nothing. But anyway, we're gonna jump right into the show today. Um, obviously, I'm sure you've all seen Mr. Levis looking pretty comfortable with his re- with his new receiving core. Uh, there's a lot of video circulating of Levis dropping some dimes to Ridley and company. The one that I posted today, honestly, it wasn't that great of a ball. Uh, it was a little wobbly, but it was put in the right spot, and uh, it was really good to see Calvin really Ridley. Uh, jump up and grab that ball. So nothing but good things so far. Obviously, we're still waiting for pads to come on. But, you know, what are some of the, the takeaways that you've seen from then till now that uh, has maybe raised your ears a little bit with our Titans over at camp? Jarrett, you want to start us off? Yeah, um, just, just like we've been saying the whole time, man. Will Levis and this team has got the whole internet and and even like some of the analyst, I'm not the analyst guys, the analysts um, hyped up for this Titans uh, season. You know they have they're starting to rank Will Levis as a breakout candidate um, this year. They're showing some respect to him now. After I kind of figured we weren't getting no respect with four wins. What was it? Four wins, Vin? That they predicted us. Uh, it so opened up. At, it opened up at five and a half, and it's since climbed to six. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, hopefully, you know, like I said, I, I don't care. I, I'd rather be not talked about and just let let the play. Just like the Cincinnati Bengals came in that year. I keep I keep referring back to them. Just just play play the game of football. We're all playing one o'clock games. It's going to be great for us. We have um, the schedule works out for us. Like I said, with some of the opponents on short weeks, where we're playing consistently at the at the one o'clock or twelve o'clock Central Time. Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm excited. Um, sky's the limit for this offense, like I said. So yeah, I'm excited too. I like that. It seems like we're building a bit of a uh, camaraderie within the organization, the coaching staff, and the players. I like what Callahan had them doing with the golf thing and whatnot, you know, just to keep the players loose, the culture, you know, loose. And, um, you know, I think we have a nice little conglomerate, five-hour word, of veteran players, of young players, uh, coaches who have been around for a while, young and -and up-and-coming coaches who have something to prove. So I think it's a nice nice little mix of everything. But – Listen, we can always get excited. We will always talk ourselves into us being a team that's going to surprise a lot of people. But, you know, I had a talk with a friend of mine not too long ago. A couple of years ago, we were at a, an engagement party, and we were a little buzzed. And, you know, everyone likes to break my balls about the Titans, like I'm sure your friends do too. And, you know, he was like, listen, dude, no one's doubting the offseason that they had. Everyone is just waiting to see how real Will Levis is. And I said, you know what? That's a fair statement. You know, we think highly of him. We saw what he could do with next to nothing. The worst offensive line in football. 
Weapons. One one receiver who is, let's be fair, can still play, but is at the tail end of his career, and a aging running back. So we saw what he could do with you know a lackluster supporting cast. Now let's see what he could do with a real supporting cast and hopefully an offensive line that will keep him upright. So, you know, when he put it to me like that, you know, it, it made sense because I think about it from my perspective, from an outsider's perspective. If I looked at the Titans, I would say, yeah, they had some additions on on paper in the offseason. They looked like they did well in the draft, but it's up to Will Levis to make them take that next step forward. So I think it's a fair statement. Yeah, I'm actually, while you were talking, I'm, I'm – Getting that photo that you wanted, Jared. I just got it. I'm going to send it Shane's way. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like I said before, it's 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 going to. There's probably going to be a little growing pains with this team. I don't think it's just all going to happen right away um, because this team is as different from the previous year to this as probably we've seen in the past ten years or so. There hasn't been this big of a jump in uh, you know the working parts of this team from one year to the next, and I'm talking players and coaching staff. This is a new franchise pretty much from top to bottom. Other than Amy Adams shrunk, that's pretty much the only constant this team has seen over the past, you know, 24 months now, I'll say. Other than that, you got new GM, you got a new head coach, you got new coordinators, you know, position coaches. Everything is different. So, yes, a lot of it's going to fall on Will Levis. Um, but I think, you know, it's going to be a collective effort all the way around. Everyone's going to have to get used to how everyone plays. Um, but there's no doubt about it. Number eight setting the tone, and it looks like he's doing that so far, and he's embracing the role each day that I see him. He's starting to embrace more and more that he's the guy. He is going to be the face of this team, God willing. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's really good to see. And, and yeah, like I said, even, you know, somebody wrote on Twitter, I think this is a perfect analogy, like even his shit throws look great. And they do because that ball with Ridley that you saw that Tennessee posted today. Uh, yeah. That wasn't really that great of a ball. It was, it was kind of one that was like flopping in the wind a little bit, but it was in the perfect place. And um, Agent Zero, you know, came down and and uh, took care of it. So, you know, I'm very excited, very, very excited. And, of course, like I said before, preseason is going to be fun too because there's a lot of, you know, fence players. that you battles. Play. Yeah, exactly. And they're, this is going to be like their Super Bowl, and they're going to be playing like it's Super Bowl. So it's going to be real fun to see. So you know? Another thing another thing that people got to realize, too, and I'm okay with it, and all Titan fans should be okay with it, too, because like you said, new regime comes in, there's going to be bumps, like you said. So if we're 500 or, or two games, you know, 500, you know, going into November, and we start clicking – you know, we, we, we've erased all those mistakes that would happen in the middle uh, the beginning of the year to the middle of the year, and we start rolling towards the playoffs. I'm okay getting into the playoffs, winning the division, and at least getting to the uh, divisional round, winning the <clears> playoff <throat> game, because you can build on to that for next year. So this is not a Super Bowl or bust year for the Titans. I mean, great if we do get to the Super Bowl and win it. By all means, absolutely fantastic well, for all no of shit. us. But the, speaking logically here, you know, a couple of years ago I would say yes, Titans are winning the Super Bowl hands down. But, you know, as you get older, you get smarter, you, you understand football a lot more. Um, this team needs to build. And, Joe, that's why I said if they get that out of the way and they're going into November and, and December and playing January and all that all that well, you know, watch out for this team to get hot late in the season. I, I solely believe that. There's going to be bumps in the road, and then we're going to start to get hot real, real fast. I think a, a successful season for us would be getting to the playoffs. Whether you win the division or not, um, I think if we make the playoff, it'll be a win for us. And like you said, Jared, it's something you could build on. I mean, shit, I would even be happy if they went nine and eight and missed, not, you know, wouldn't be happy they missed the playoff. But this team can make a jump from where they did last year with an old team with a, a staff that was kind of stuck in their ways. And they flip it in one year to a whole new staff. Basically, everyone's new besides a handful of players. If they can turn it around in a year and go nine and eight, you know, I'd be happy with that as well. I want to see more wins than losses. I want to see that Will Levis is, is the guy that we think he can be. To me, that's most important because he's your guy that's going to be here for, if he's the guy, 10, 12, 15 years. All the other pieces are going to be interchangeable. I mean, you look at the best quarterbacks around, they outlast all their, you know, talent position players because, you know, they come and go, but the quarterback is here to stay if he's your guy. So yeah, I want to see us 
go above 500. I think making the playoffs would be, you know, a win for us. Obviously, you want to see them go far in the playoffs. So more than anything else, I want to see that Will Levis is, is, is the guy because we're building a team right now for a quarterback under a rookie contract. And, um, you know, if, if he's the guy, you know, we're doing it right. But if he's not, you have to start all over. So, yeah. And I think um, what I'm looking for the most, of course, you go into every season, A, hoping your team makes the playoffs, and B, gets that ultimate goal. Uh, but you got to be realistic. And uh, I think the playoffs is a serious, obtainable goal. Um, but I think, you know, the most, most, most important thing is solidifying Will Levis as the face of the franchise, making sure for certainty he's the guy. There's no more searching for the next decade, at least. This guy is going to be the, the, the starting quarterback, and we're going to feel comfortable about it, and we're going to feel ready to rock and roll each and every season. That is priority number one, two, and three. Everything else should fall into place because this team has an excellent roster that we built. There are a couple a couple positions that could be a little bit better or could have more depth. But this is a complete football team from top to bottom, assuming the players that we brought in that are either rookies or very new and young players do their job. This is a very complete team. So obviously sky's the limit, but I don't want there to be any more confusion about who should be the quarterback. I don't want any more people on Twitter. Obviously, there's always going to be no matter what, but I want the small – group of people that still think the jury's out on him. I want that to be all done with. No more talk of that. Um, just focusing completely on getting everyone else around him better. And then, uh, I mean, I couldn't have more confidence in Rand Carthon and Callahan. I just couldn't. And I've said it a million times. I'll say it a million more. If it ain't with this kid, if it ain't with these three, Levis, Carthon, and Callahan, if this ain't the three amigos to take us to the promised land, then I don't know who's going to be because yeah. these seem like the right fit all around. So, yeah. Speaking of quarterbacks, I want to stay on the topic, and and I brought it up to you guys before too. Um, just to change the subject a little bit, you know, since the you know Titans news is kind of stale, let's just talk about division here. Uh, where would you rank these quarterbacks, and where would you rank Will Levis specifically to in this division? Yeah, then. Uh, well, listen, I'll give C.J. Stroud his flowers. I mean, he was a game away from. The title, AFC title game as a rookie, he looks like even when he was in college, pure of a passer, as you will find, he just looks natural doing it. And then I'm going to frustrate some Jags fans, but they're always a little mad at the world. And um, I'm going to put Will Levis, too, because I think Trevor Lawrence has done nothing but regress since he became the Jacksonville Jaguars starting quarterback. He got way overpaid. We could talk about that, too. Then I'll put him, uh, Goldilocks, Trevor Lawrence, looking like my big toe. Sunshine. And sunshine. Yeah, don't want – well, Sunshine was, you know, Paul a lot more handsome than Trevor Lawrence. But um, And then I'll put Anthony Richardson because he showed some flashes last year, but until he stays healthy, um, I, um, you know, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. He looks like he will not change his style because his style is what makes him him. He's going to continue to run the ball, and I think injuries will be an issue for him. Injuries can be an issue for anybody, but sometimes your your style makes it a little more likely than not. Um, and I think his style is going to make him injury prone the rest of his career. So I will go C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Trevor Lawrence, Anthony Richardson. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think you can interchange two and three. I know there's going to be people, be people out there that will pull Levis last because he hasn't shown much other than his, uh, you know, eight games, but, you know, being a little biased, I'll put him at two. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I think right now I think that uh, Levis and Richardson have the ability to be just as good as C.J. Stroud. I do. Um, but if we're just going to base it off of what they've done to this point, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously I couldn't put Levis – two yet because this is based off what they've done so far and I think Levis is a better quarterback than Trevor Lawrence and I think he's going to be better but until he actually is better um you know he's only gotten eight touchdowns in the league so I'm, I'm not going to be a, a maniac here I'm going to put Stroud number Sal one being being I'm, uh... I'm, I'm just I'm trying to be <laughs> level-headed here I'm not going to put him <laughs> I'm not going to set him to Canton just yet 
At um, all times, he wants to be level-headed. He chooses now. <laughs> no, it's 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 because I don't want to jinx anything. I really don't. Um, but I just I can't I can't put him above Lawrence yet because he's got to be uh, better than Lawrence. I think he's going to be better than Lawrence fucking four weeks into the season this year. But until he is, he's going to be three. It's going to be Stroud, Lawrence, Levis, Richardson fourth, and obviously I, I want Levis over the other three right now because he's got the edge that I don't think any of the other three have. But I'm just basing off of what they've done up to this point. Yeah, product um, on the field. Yeah, who I, who I think has the the highest ceiling. Like I said, I think Levis and Richardson and Shroud could all be one A, B, and C. Really, they all have what you need. They have the mobility and they have the strength. And, you know, it's just if they have it between the years. But they're all athletically, they're all just so freaking like right there. You can make the argument Richardson is the most athletic player on the league, but he hasn't done anything yet. So um, that's to be my rankings. And then hopefully by the fall or almost towards the winter, Levis could be the best in the division. Yeah. He's got the ability to. He's just going to have the right supporting cast, and we're going to find out sooner or later. Absolutely. So. Since we're still on these topics, we're just going to run skill skill position, fellas. Um, best running back room in the division. What do you guys think? That's a tough one, too, because even skill position-wise, wide receivers and everything is, is tough, too. So we'll hit that next. Yeah, I mean – Running backs. Yeah, it's uh, – I think the obvious – two teams that you got to decide who's one and who's two is Tennessee and Jacksonville. Um, Ooh, he's leaving JT out. Joe Mixon, yeah. JT. No. They, first, Jonathan Taylor's washed. He's done. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Ooh. I said it. Tag it. Post it. Wow. Tag fucking sick podcast Colts. Tag Brown, everyone. Jersey's finest. Jonathan Taylor Cl- 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 nuts. is wow. washed. Wow! At, at the at the best, Bold he's watched when he in, plays the Titans. June. Look at the stats; he is fucking atrocious when he plays the Titans. Okay. I don't see that changing That's anytime okay. soon. Okay, if you're going to be a top five running back in the league, there can't be certain teams you don't play well against, especially when one of them is a team you play twice a year. JT is cooked. Um, I love Etn Junior. I'm obviously I don't love the Jags, but. I think people have no idea what an incredible rookie year he had. I think he had like 1,500 all-purpose yards, uh, and he's he wasn't on a really great team. He's on a good team. He wasn't on a great team. So I think if they get better, Jacksonville, he's only going to get better. And then it, it's either Tennessee or Jacksonville, I think. I really do. Wait, what team's Joe Mixon on now? The Texans. He's on the Texans? Yeah. So they got – and who's the other one with the Texans? Uh, Damian uh, – Who's the other running back on Houston? Damian Harris. No. no. Damian Pierce, right? Pierce, yeah. Pierce, Pierce, yeah. Pierce. Yeah, no. It's either it's either it's either Tennessee or Jacksonville. I think Tennessee, honestly, Pollard and Spears. I think that's the best one too. In the division, you can make an argument in the league because I still think Spears is way better than even his rookie year was. He's, we didn't use him the so right way. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, we had an so ass clown at coordinator last year. Not this year. Oh, so Sky's the limit. I, I still think he's Alvin Kamara, T- Tajay Spears. That's literally who he is. Just got to use him that way, and yeah. that's it. So, Yeah, I think he's a little probably smaller than Alvin Kamara maybe, but stylistically I see what you're saying. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, you're not going to find a bigger Tajay Spears stand than me. I was a fan of him since, you know, his days are too late. I wanted us to draft him, and we got him. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to obviously be biased again. But I think this is for more of a better reason, and I'll say the Titans are one because I think you have a legit two-headed monster. You have Tony Pollard, who's established in this league, who started off slow last year off of his injury, but by the end of the year, you're starting to look like the Tony Pollard of old. Um, And then you have Tajay Spears, who's shown big flashes in his rookie year, big, big flashes. Um, I think having Derrick Henry as a mentor as a rookie was probably phenomenal for him. Um, I think he has all the raw ability in the world, and I think you're going to see him get um, a lot more uh, touches than he did last year. Obviously, he's going to be more of a centerpiece of his offense. I think him and Pollard will complement each other like we haven't seen in a long time in the Tennessee Titans organization. Dash and dash. I'm just going to say that. we have Read Mark. Yeah. One two punch in Smash and Dash, Lendell White, and Chris Johnson back in was that probably the mid 2000s, 08, 09 ish? 08, yeah. Yeah, something like that. 
Um, but yeah, and I can understand why people would say, well, listen, Tommy Spears is still young. Tony Pollard didn't look like the same after his injury, yada, yada. But I fully believe the potential is there. I am not going to say Jonathan Taylor is wash one. He's a South Jersey local, so I'll give him his flowers there. Um, I think he has all the ability in the world when he is healthy. And then who's their backup that stepped up last year? Zach Moss, is he still on the team? And it's, it's sure. it one of those, one of those. It doesn't, like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, um, you know, actually at two, I will put uh, ETN. I think he has all the ability in the world. I I, I agree with Sal. I think uh, if he stays healthy, he could be a premier running back in the league. Then I will put um, Jonathan Taylor. As much as I like Joe Mixon, I think he's at the tail end of his career. Um, he is, seems to be pretty durable. He seems to show up year in and year out. That's um, get last season. <clears throat> yeah, but I also think that his time is coming, and his time is is uh, coming to the end, coming to an end as a, a premier NFL running back. But listen, I, it's pick your poison in this division. Yeah, and seriously, the, you could make an argument for any of the teams, but because the Titans have a legit one-two punch that I think it's hard to deny that they are the best tandem in, in the division when it comes to the running back position. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's running backs now. Now this is where it gets a little tricky with the wide receiver room because there is a lot of wide receivers in this division, and it, it's spicy as all hell, starting with us, um, the Texans, Jaguars, and even the Colts. Man, How do you, how do you guys rank this wide receiver room in uh, the AFC South? Yeah, I got to go Houston first only because of the Diggs is younger. Tank Dell's a stud. Uh, I know there's Nico other people. Nico Collins. Nico Collins, yeah. Um, Diggs ain't that young. Diggs is probably close to year 10. No, I think yeah, Diggs is he's, 30. He's going to be 30. Yeah, he's, he's still younger than he's, – he's younger than D-Hop. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can match him up. You can match him up. Diggs and D-Hop probably pretty – fairly equal at this point right now. Maybe you give the edge to Diggs a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's close. It's definitely close. I think the Jags are probably fourth. Um, and they don't even really have a bad re receiving no. core. They really Kirk, don't. Kirk, Gabe Davis. Yeah, but you look at the other three. I mean, you know, uh, Colts got Alec Pierce, who I like a lot. They got Michael Josh Pittman. Downs, who's Michael really Pittman. good. Michael Pittman. I've always loved him. Um, so they would probably be three, and then it's either it's either Tennessee or Houston. I think it's 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 that's the only real debate. Yeah. Maybe you could debate who's three and four, but you can either debate who's three and four and who's one and two. I think both two teams are the top two and the bottom two. It's just a matter of who you put where. But I'll give the edge right now. It's, a, it's total biased. I'll give the edge to Tennessee because of what they've done already. Yeah, I'll be biased with you too there, Sal. I think uh, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, and Tyler Boyd is as good of a receiving core as you'll find not only in the AFC South, but, you know, probably close to the league, in my opinion, to have three receivers, two of which you think can be legit number one receivers on teams in D-Hop and Calvin Ridley. And then you have, you know, for all intents and purposes, the best number three receiver maybe in the league. So I'll put the Titans one. And the best number four, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's like sleeping on Burks. I mean, no. he hasn't done anything. Nobody but he has that on. supporting cast right now with them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to utter his name until he proves us worthy of doing exactly. so. You know, I'd like to see him. Well, I'd like to see him do some funky shit. Let him be a gunner. Let him return kicks, punts. I don't care. Anyways, I'll put the Titans one. I'll put uh two. I'll give to the Texans because Diggs can still play. Nico Collins seems to be um, – uh, it was a Nico Collins or Tank Dell that had that breakout year last year. Well, Nico Collins did, but he got, he just got paid too. But Tank Dell had his – Tank Dell had a great year. year. Yeah, a great so, year yeah. broke his leg. Yeah, that's right. So I'll give them the two spot, and then I'll go – I'll go Jags and give Christian Kirk his flowers. He's he got paid and no one really thought he deserved it, and he's played pretty well. They also got Gabe Davis, who I'm not as big on as other people are. I think he was the recipient of a lot of touchdowns because Stefan Diggs got a lot of attention in Buffalo. And then I'll go with the Colts because outside of Michael Pittman, 
Josh Downs is a burner. I, I think that's going to be his role, though, solely. Um, and then Alec Pierce, yeah, he's good, but he hasn't really done anything to, um, you know, that jumps off the page, in my opinion. So I'll go Titans, Texans, Jags, Colts. Fair awesome. enough. Fair enough. I th- you know, like I said, it, it, it's very hard to go against the Texans. You know, I'm just not a Stephon Diggs guy. And when, Sal, you were talking about, you know, you'll give the edge to him over D-Hop now. D-Hop is not that diva type wide receiver. He shuts up. He comes to work. He catches but footballs not what, and yeah, he balls out. About I, no, I know. I know. Skill wise. Yeah. Stephon Diggs. Yeah. He could do all that, but he still gets shut down. D Hop yeah. rarely gets shut down. All right. So that's why I'm giving, you know, the Titans not, you know, not being biased at all, but here we are. We, we could possibly have the best three wide receivers this franchise has ever put together on a field ever. All right. Um, so that, and then I would go Houston and obviously Jags and the Colts, not, not to, you know, go anything crazy on that but it's just itself you see it on paper and you just think like this year the titans have the best weapons and like like vin you've been saying it we're surrounding our quarterback with talent i can't wait until september comes training camp like i told i told vinnie the other day while you were at the wedding so uh, you could throw all that shit out the window um preseason football i'm done with it i want week one against the bears in in um in Chicago, and I want to light it up, especially against Caleb Williams. So I can't wait for that. Um, we got a picture over here. I want raw reactions from you guys. Uh, Shane, throw this up. Yeah. Raw reactions when you guys seen this photo on Twitter that surfaced all over the well, place. Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 like, you know, NFL is all freaking erect now. They want to talk about Derrick Henry every fucking two seconds now he's in Baltimore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's whatever. I I, I really – I don't I, – I think he's going to have a, a – a really off year. I don't think he's going to be do as well as everyone thinks. Ugh. I don't know what it is. I, don't think it, I just, I just don't foresee it happening. I don't Ugh. could be wrong. He could have a fucking all pro year. Shay, um, get this shit off the TV. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's whatever. Oh, yeah. no. Nah, I mean, when I, when I seen it, you know, we haven't talked about Henry as much and no one really on Titans Twitter hasn't talked about him, him, him leaving. He's a cornerstone to this franchise. You can put the statue out in front, in my opinion, for what he's done. No and the memories and the, the memories, what he did. But when he's going over to Baltimore, there's a statue. Nah. When he goes over to Baltimore and to see that it does, it, it does put the dagger in your chest. Uh. I understand that he wants he wanted to move on a little bit, try to chase a ring, but I do agree with you, Sal. I think it's gonna be somewhat of an off year. He said he wasn't gonna be the focal point. You know, yeah. he's not he's not that he is not that focal point in the offense because he's got Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Lamar Jackson's gonna take a lot of his carries away. Okay. And you know that he can't he's gonna run the zone read well. I, you know, he's still he could probably break a thousand yards, possibly. Yeah, but, he um, will. He will. I think uh, you are both wrong. I think Derrick Henry, if you can grab him. At 40 or 50 to one, I believe, for offensive player of the year, it's not a bad oh, bet. Oh, I think right. he has the potential. Let me finish. You can finish. I think he has the potential to score 20 touchdowns. I think Lamar Jackson and him are going to be a phenomenal duo in that backfield. Uh, I, I think they have the potential to be a very dangerous team. The Baltimore Ravens are always competitive. And now you just added probably the best running back of the last decade to this team who can still play, who had no real offensive line the last few years. He had a quarterback who – his quarterback situation the last few years was lackluster with Tannehill and then a rookie getting his feet wet. Now he has Lamar Jackson, who is not only a threat throwing the ball but running it as well. I think this duo is – it has – Scary potential, and I think he can put up 15 to 20 touchdowns, and I think he is going to get 12 to 1,500 yards on the ground. I think wow. you're going to see – maybe I'm biased and I still got some love for him, and that's why it was hard for me to look at that. But I think he's going to be more motivated than ever. I think you know what shape he's coming in. He's coming into an organization that is known for winning. He has stayed healthy throughout the course of his career, aside from a broken foot, where he still almost had a thousand yards that season. Uh, and I think he is going to prove the doubters wrong. Uh, I think his age is really not going to be a problem. I don't think his workload of the past is going to be a problem. I think he's going to have a very stellar year. Yeah, I mean, I'm not buying the Kool Aid at all. I'm, I'm, I'm not big uh, Lamar. To me, I, I don't think Lamar can 
compete with, uh, like, in the playoffs, deep in the playoffs. Great quarterback, absolutely phenomenal talent. Uh, just to compete with, like, the Burroughs and the Mahomes um, in the playoffs. Uh, I mean, they, they, they just shut down the run. And they're going to force him to throw. And I just don't think he can throw. Don't let me, don't get it twisted. He can throw, but can't throw with the best of them, like Joe Burrow and um, uh, Pat Patrick. I mean, it all is pretty sad. I mean, you got, it, it you is. Got, you got Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers, Mark okay. Andrews, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman. Um, they lost Hollywood Brown, but, you know, I, I think this offense could be pretty scary. And, yeah, I think, I, I mean, it could be, but I, I just don't see him doing. I can't imagine he gets more than 20 carries a game. I just can't imagine it. It doesn't matter how good that they're not, yeah. they are a running team, but. And you know, Derrick Henry needs a lot of carries to get going. Yeah, We've Derrick, seen Henry, it multiple at, years. Derrick Henry at 32 or whatever, 31, he's not just going to show up in Baltimore and then be the focal point of an offense that already is incredibly good and has guys that need to continue to get their touches. Like Zay Flowers is potentially a top 10 receiver in the league. If Derrick Henry's running the ball 35 times a game, he's not going to be used at his best potential. Just like the plethora Mark of Andrews. receivers that we've had and tight ends that could could have had better seasons, better careers, if we weren't so heavily dependent on the run. A.J. Brown, his first two years were good, could have been a lot better because of the fact that we ran the ball 100 times a fucking game. I just don't foresee them doing that. And again, Lamar is good for 10 rushes a, a game. That's not going to change. So what? You're going to give Derrick Henry the ball 30 times and still have Lamar rush the ball 10? Then no, I think a lot of Lamar's rushes sometimes you might get five design runs and then a lot of his rushes are more or less the pocket breaking down and him deciding to take off. Hey, listen, we'll see. I'm not saying I hope that they fucking do good. I hate the Baltimore Raptors, but I think the potential of Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson in the backfield, we all be remiss to say. Now, that cannot be a scary tandem. Very yeah. scary. We also said, well, maybe not all of us, but we also said I said at one point that Malik Willis and Derek Henry would be a scary tandem at one point, but yeah, well. clearly that wasn't the case. <laughs> um, let's, let's let's wrap it up for today. We had a, we had a nice lengthy show tonight. Um, as always, guys, we appreciate everyone that joins in and watches us each and every week. If you're not following us already on YouTube, please feel free to do so. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening to our show, make sure you're following us. The more support we have from you guys, the better off we'll be. The more, uh, you know, the, the higher up our reputation will continue to rise and the better product we'll be able to, to provide for you guys. So uh, make sure you do everything you can to help us out. And uh, that's going to do it. We'll keep you updated on Twitter of what's to come. And uh, you know the deal, guys. As always, tighten up. Shane, you can send us out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Talking Titans on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.